So there were a ton of new updates announced at WWDC this week, and iOS 15 is going to be bringing a lot to Apple devices this fall. But for me, the most exciting new features were the ones made to improve your health and productivity, which is literally what this channel is all about. So let's do a quick run through of the new iOS features that I think you should be looking out for this fall. What is up everybody, it's your boy Noah. If it's your first time here, I make videos on the best health and productivity tech out there. So if this sounds interesting to you, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. The first new feature was the walking steadiness. The idea here is now the iPhone can track changes in your balance, stability, coordination, and it alerts you if your risk of falling increases. What I love about this is that they are promoting mobility, which I don't feel a lot of fitness influencers or trainers are promoting as much. The second biggest health update to iOS 15 is the fact that Apple enhanced their lab results page, which now provides a clearer description of what your actual health metrics mean. Everything from your cholesterol stats to your blood glucose levels. What's also cool about this lab results is that you can actually store your COVID-19 vaccine and test results securely in the health app. The third and I think the best health update to iOS 15 is trends, which basically gives you insights into long-term changes in your health metrics, such as your steps, resting heart rate, and it shares any positive or negative changes that it detects. I think seeing your overall trends in your health and getting important alerts and updates is a perfect way to truly understand the actual state of your health and how you may need to adjust what you're doing to make sure it's trending in the right direction. Now, what is super cool about all of these updates is the fact that you could share all of this data with the people closest to you and receive notifications when something may be off or moving in the right direction. It could be anything from sending your doctor important health data for a follow-up appointment, or maybe it's sharing your information with the people closest to you, such as a spouse or other family members, and it does it securely through encryption. Now moving to the health-related features that will be added to the Apple Watch with the new Watch OS 8. The first thing being the revamp of their Breathe app. After a year, probably the most people experiencing burnout, mental health challenges, Apple decided to change their Breathe app name to mindfulness. I think my favorite addition to the mindfulness app is the new reflect feature, which gives you a new animation and short prompts to focus on a certain theme, such as gratitude or joy. I've been personally practicing meditation and reflection over the past month, and it has seriously done wonders for me when it comes to clearing my brain, helping me de-stress from daily anxieties and worries. In fact, if you're interested in hearing about my meditation routine and my favorite app that I use, let me know in the comments below. The second thing they updated is they added a new metric when it comes to tracking your sleep called the sleeping respiratory rate, which basically calculates the number of breaths per minute as you sleep. This provides you a greater insight into your overall wellness and sleep quality. I love to see these improvements and I'm hoping Apple keeps pushing further into making the Apple Watch an ultimate fitness tracker and smartwatch to compete with the other brands out there such as Garmin, Fitbit, Amazon, which I actually am going to make a review on soon. The last and final health features that are going to be implemented within Watch OS 8 are gonna be to the fitness app. They added Pilates as a new workout and they also added in Tai Chi which I think is cleverly called meditation in motion. I don't know if I'll personally be doing much Tai Chi but it is great that they're expanding their list of trackable workouts. Now on the fitness plus side of things they are introducing a guest celebrity trainer named Jeanette Jenkins to provide a special set of workouts and also include new workout playlists inspired by single artists such as Alicia Keys or Jennifer Lopez. I think they got this idea from Peloton with their artist series. If you didn't know already I'm super obsessed with Apple Fitness Plus and couldn't recommend recommended enough to try out. Feel free to check out my latest review on the fitness app itself. It's amazing, just trust me. Now finally, when it comes to productivity, which I relate to anything that helps to improve your mental health and learning ability, there's honestly a lot that Apple added, but I will just stick to my two to three favorite apps for the sake of time. The first being the focus feature, which basically helps you to reduce distractions and focus better. For me, as somebody who is working on being more productive, managing a YouTube channel on the side and a full-time job, this is a big one for me and I think will be extremely useful. It allows you to filter out notifications and apps based off of the activity that you're doing. So you could set different filters based off if you're working, you want entertainment time, and it's pretty neat as you can only allow the interruptions that are most important to you, and you can set up auto replies that your contacts will see that you are in focus mode when they try to message you. You can also set up a custom home screen for a specific focus setting to help reduce any temptation to engage with other apps. And what's really cool is you can actually transfer these different focus modes across your devices. And honestly, I think this is a really crazy cool feature that they implemented. My second favorite productivity feature that's gonna be updated 
is Quick Notes, which is a fast and easy way to take notes anywhere and access across your Apple ecosystem by just swiping with a finger or using your Apple Pencil. This is good if you wanna jot down phone numbers, ideas, or contacts. They also added the usage of tags, which helps you to effectively organize your information. And they are now allowing collaboration on shared notes where you could see the latest updates in an activity view. And then the last two honorable mentions that I'll fit into this category is the new live text and visual lookup feature. Live text basically allows you to copy and paste text from photos, screenshots, images, and Safari. This is great when you're trying to grab notes from a presentation or a lecture and you wanna translate these into a notes app similar to Evernote or Notion. And for visual lookup, you can just swipe up and tap the information button on a photo and it will recognize the objects that are in the scene and provide you a description of that image. Apple also improved the multitasking ability in iPad OS by providing easier access to the split view and slide over functions in a new menu on the screen. Honestly, I was a bit disappointed in the iPad OS update and was really hoping for more functionality, more on that in a future video, but it basically seems that Apple just keeps crippling its iPad and not making a suitable laptop replacement. Hopefully there is more to come this year. Please, Apple, please. Well, I know that was a lot of information, but those were my favorite health and productivity features that are going to go across the range of Apple devices in the OS releasing this upcoming fall. Question of the day, what was your favorite new health or productivity feature that you heard about in this week's WWDC? Let me know in the comments below, but that basically wraps up today's video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, go ahead and compile that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and you already know, embrace the hype. Cody Jap, you kidding?